Hello, welcome to Squash Warp episode 11, and today we are reusing our reusable space launch vehicle, or shuttle, and we have Dudrind and Heliana Kerman. Dudrind, of course, uh, we've had many times. Heliana's brand new, also a pilot. She's going to get trained up. So, as usual, we're struggling with the launch profile for this thing. Uh, I felt like I was doing better. We always lose, though. They fall off in that exact pattern. It's really interesting. Um... I felt like we were doing better. We we hit that 45 degree marker pretty soon after 10 kilometers, which is what I aim for. Um, and uh, so far, our gravity turn is going rather well. And uh, then we don't have enough thrust later. And I get so distracted with uh, my uh, ascent trajectory here uh, and also losing control, um, over over rotating everything. Incidentally, I think I still haven't fixed some of the control flaws on this thing. The the rudders are doing uh, roll and pitch instead of yaw. But in any case, with everything that's going on trying to get us into space, I actually completely forget to, to ditch those side tanks uh, for a while. I'm not sure how long I was burning the engine with those empty, but hopefully it wasn't too long. Thankfully, we, uh, we have some extra fuel in this, and um, we also uh, added monopropellant to that nose cone, so we should have... A little bit more range. Now we have more fuel, not because we added more fuel, but because uh, we should have less mass in the cargo bay than we normally have. Yeah, see there, I'm finally remembering. Ditching those external tanks and watching the nice real plume effects, listening to the KW engine sounds, which I of course butcher by accelerating them by four times. In any case, we are launching our first uh, resupply and maintenance mission to the Dol Guldor Space Station. And Dudrin also is looking forward to uh, visiting his friends up there. And uh, I think he has not yet been there. So we overburn, of course, because we have the, um, uh, the config that uh, has a slow response on the engine time. So I'm cutting out all of the, those rendezvous uh, maneuvers because we don't really care. We set up a few maneuvers. We get our rendezvous. We do the final burn. And uh, I reveal the contents of our cargo bay. It's a bunch of the Kerbal inventory uh, containers there. So with that, our Kerbals can go on EVA and uh, grab various supplies out of the containers and even move the containers around. We'll be seeing a bunch of that because it is awesome. Uh, also awesome, the docking port alignment indicator by Navy Fish. There's a couple of those small docking ports in the cargo bay there, as usual. Um, they... Uh, are the same that we have been using to launch probes and uh, there's one that's attached to the front of the cargo bay and that's the one I'm controlling from right now which is why the indicator is telling us with the red lines that uh, we're actually past our target because I'm aiming for the docking port that's on the far side of that adapter and we're gonna move up to it and then come back the the second docking port that's in there uh, was originally at the back of the cargo bay and at the last minute it got moved uh, just thrown onto one of those containers, mostly because it was in the way of uh, that, that third container down there. I also added more life support supplies to this space plane so that we could resupply the space station. Uh, not that we are in need of life support at the moment. Uh, right now, we're kind of expecting to replace the crew before we need to replace the life support. Back down to real time because the docking port Docking sound sounds like a machine gun if I speed it up. Um, we are aiming for that front port because I think the Kerbals can walk through that, right? So we attach there and whoops, <laughs> yeah, um, we, uh, we bounced off the one I was aiming for and the magnetic force on the other one captured us and brought us in. Hmm. Um, I mean, I don't want to do the whole docking maneuver again. As me thinking about it, uh, and also dealing with the, the camera mod is giving me a little window there that I'm trying to get rid of. There we go. I want to undock and fix this. It just feels like the Kerbal shouldn't be able to walk through that. So undock, and redock. Very nice. Okay, that's fine. I don't really... It's fine. So, um, everybody, uh, we can do our transfers. We can... Uh, get this show on the road. Actually, first we want to bring up a tech fuel balancer because I do not uh, want to do all of these uh, transfers by hand. Um, but I'm going to edit 
through this out. We're just moving food, water, and oxygen into the station and getting rid of the waste, putting it in the space plane to be taken away. I skipped through that. Our Kerbals go in the station to, uh, to wait. And now it's time to send our engineer, Kerry Kerman, out to uh, retrofit the space station. So if you'll remember, we were lacking in battery power, and that meant that we couldn't maintain sufficient power throughout the dark side of our orbit. So in one of these containers, we have a couple of the very large uh, side-mounted batteries. So Kerry's going to, um, well, first he's going to go back and get his tool, because once again, our Kerbal forgot their tool. It's all right. Now we're going to go over here and grab the battery and attach it to the side of the space station so that uh, we can do our research. Except I didn't attach it to the side of the space station. I just dropped it next to the side of the space station and it went flying. So this is where I need some of the Kevin McLeod ragtime piano music that is in all of Danny's videos because <laughs> it's just such a mess. I, uh, you know, there are, there are, <laughs> there are, uh, there are things that are more frustrating in the game, but usually there are things like, you know, game breaking bugs or something like that. This is like, I'm trying to knock it back to the station because I can't attach it from far away. Like I, I'm, I'm just trying to get it within attachment range. If I can grab it while I'm close enough to the station that I can just bolt it to something, then I can get it back. But I'm really feeling like we may have just lost the battery. Um, and it's, you know, that's not a thing that I feel like it is, 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 uh, quite worth reverting. If we could just headbutt it back there, um, but it's not drifting off too fast. Uh, so, uh, we get another idea. Dudrin volunteers himself. He says, Carrie, get back in the plane. We're going to go after it. I'm going to help you. Uh, so, uh, that's a good friend there, right? He just got done flying this ship. And now he's going to go back into the plane after just arriving in the comfortable cabin and uh, go after this battery that his friend dropped into orbital space. All right, target it, maneuver, and uh, we might be able to get it in the cargo bay. We know we've captured a space probe in the cargo bay in the past, so why not a battery? We're not going to use the main engines. It's not moving that quickly but I am going to time accelerate because this is tedious enough as it is. Okay, uh, I've got the cargo bay bound to an action group, so we're just going to bring it right in and close the doors, <laughs> and it escapes and goes flying off even faster. This is a nightmare. Uh, this is actually what Carrie Kerman will have nightmares about um, uh, in the future. Uh, out in space, the battery's gone, running out of EVA propellant, it's just uh, not a good time. All right, we're going to stay calm and we're going to do this. This has all been accelerated by four times. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I enjoy this game at the worst of times, I guess is what I should say. So we pulled up nice and slow. Now Carrie's going to actually get out and wait for it to spin by and bolt it to the side of the craft. Thank goodness. Oh, my God, that was like... That was actually the worst when that happened. Um, all right, let's redo this. <laughs> that took us basically an entire half orbit to go chase that thing down. So uh, we're going to redock. And I wouldn't make you watch it over again, except um, I really just uh, find docking in orbit enjoyable. And uh, my girlfriend was actually listening to the soundtrack for, uh, for Giselle. She uh, teaches dance. And uh, while I was editing this part of the video, I was hearing that music. And uh, if I were inclined to, I think that they would go very well together. It's, uh, you know, ever since Blue Danube in uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, classical or at least, uh, you know, instrumental music sounds really good with docking. I also really like our camera angle with this. And hey, this time, maybe I can get it on the right docking port. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, it doesn't matter, but I like the idea that uh, maybe there's a tube through that fuel tank that they can crawl through instead of, like, how would they magically transport into the storage container and then into the space station. So, uh, yeah, slowing time back down to normal again. We've overshot a little bit, and I've turned RCS off, and I don't know why it's not working. Uh, there we go. We get it back. We want to be 
really close to it. I'm watching the little numbers on the bottom right of the docking port alignment indicator, but I'm, I've also got to try to keep it lined up at the same time. And we grab it, and it rocks, and then it bounces, and docks to the wrong one again. <laughs> All right, well, we're just going to undock like we usually do, and uh, this will uh, correct itself, just like last time. And wait for it. There we go. Standard docking procedure, I guess. <laughs> Jostling the connector down in there. Yeah, in hindsight, I could have put that, that docking port you know, in one of the containers, and then we wouldn't have had these problems. All right, back to what we were doing. Carry, uh, even though it's nighttime, he feels he messed this up. It's his responsibility to fix it right now. So using a method of uh, handing off, using tie downs, he's gonna put it down there and then move it onto the station. Very nice. And uh, he even wants to complete the job with the other battery. So let's grab that other battery, attach it before we drift away, there we go. And uh, let's put it up there. We don't want to block that heat vent there on the side of the itinerant storage container. That's um, from the station parts pack, um, by the way, that, uh, that second container. It, it holds two Kerbals and has a small power generator inside. It's quite nice. Um, yeah, pausing the game when I'm trying to quit my inventory moving. Uh, maybe if we hold on to this ladder, we can re... Yeah, we can. Oh, I love Kerbals and their Gumby arms. Um, uh, I'm going to get really OCD with these solar panels here, so bear with me. We want one facing over there, and then we want them to be spaced away from each other and facing in opposite directions so that when the doors open to expose the panels, they don't clip into each other. Yeah, let's not knock into anything. And Carrie can come back in and get a pal on the back, because that was, that was intense. Uh, and thank his friend Dudrin, because uh, he really came through for him. Let's time warp until we can see. There we go. All right, we got. Uh, we can deploy these panels now. We got a little extra power generation. Looks quite nice. I put them both on the back because there's a door on the other side. And we have a preferred orientation for the station now. All right, Wiltrid Kerman is going to do her turn at EVA. She's also an engineer. There's no limitation on you know that you have to be an engineer to do these things. At least not with these parts. And she forgot the drill. Um, but I like, the, I like the idea that the engineers are the ones. Isn't that so neat? The drill's actually in her hand. I, I like, can't get over this mod. Um, so we're going to grab those radiators. I don't think we need them, but uh, I wanted to throw them in there. I feel like if we're attaching more solar panels, we, we should get more heat radiation capability. And a light. Let's get it pointed the right way. Let's put a light there temporarily so we can see. And let's not forget it and try to re-enter with a light hanging off. It, we still can't see. We'll, let's turn it on. Ah, uh, much better. Thank you. Uh, Wiltrid is, is grateful for the light. Okay, um, let's put it on this side over here next to this other radiator. Uh, maybe right there. What on earth? Or what on Kerbin? What off Kerbin? Seriously, what, what happened? Uh, I'm now afraid to put the other one there, but let's do it. Oh, it... It deploys automatically, I guess. So it must have deployed into that solar panel. So I guess it would have broken when we tried to deploy it anyway. I don't know what mod is making that uh, that open, but uh, I mean, that could even just be stuck. I don't really know how that is. There we go. We got it at a 90 degree angle. I think that looks quite nice and we'll be able to see it out the window. Yeah, I want it, I want it retracted so that I don't smash it. Those things are so fragile. Let's try it again. Um, yeah, she's just going to crash into it. Retract the... I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't get it to, to, to stay retracted. So uh, we just have to be really careful now that we've put it there. Um, perhaps... I, I mean, I don't think we're generating so much heat that it's forcing. And uh, that's a gunshot sound going off here, but that's just the sound of the docking happening. Every time we attach it, it thinks we're docking. But uh, this is the, the main uh, component, other than the batteries, this is the very important component that we're adding. We're retrofitting the space station with the 1.25 meter Clampatron docking port. Um, and uh, Kerry is coming out to help, but of course he needs his tool. Um, 
And we're going to tag team this so there's less time spent uh, running around. He's going to hand it over here. And then Wiltrid <coughs> is going to attach it uh, closer to the bottom. Uh, except she put it on the little attachment node there and messed it up. So I got to kind of press a bunch of buttons for a little bit and fix it. There we go. Um, we want to, this space station, we actually always intended to put a clampatron on the end there. I left that blank on purpose, but we had not invented the larger docking port yet when this uh, space station was launched. But we knew it was going to be there, and uh, I just think it's fantastic that the Kerbals can, can put that there. Attach on the node and everything. And, and it gets better. Now he's, uh, this is Kerry, he's moving the, uh, the uh, containers around. So we can actually grab the mount uh, that the container is attached to and pass it on up. She's just going to grab the container and put it on the mount that we had already planned. I didn't put containers on the ship initially. Oh, she can even reach that one. It's so good. Um, I didn't put the containers initially because we have to open the service bay for them to fit. But if we just move... Um, we just move that mount piece down there, then he can uh, head on over here. This one that he's about to move uh, actually contains the uh, a lot of parts, um, and they're pretty heavy. They're the parts from the, the science experiment pack, and uh, this is an incredible feature here. It's too heavy. He can't move it, but if you bring the other Kerbal over, uh, Wiltrid and Carrie together can move the whole thing. Just incredible. And now she's perfectly positioned to just stick it on the little attachment point there. Amazing. Uh, while she's here, she's going to grab that spare science uh, mystery goo report from uh, Minmus. And uh, she has that on her. She's going to fly this over to the uh, plane and put it in, in uh, the container there inside the... Uh, the crude part, whatever it's called, we'll recover it on Kerbin. And uh, she's still not done. Um, after doing some spinning, she's going to stick that container mount in her bag. And uh, <laughs> I wonder if this thing has fixed itself while it's in the container. Nope. That would have been nice. It would have been a nice little cheat. But uh, no, we'll just throw it in the cargo bay. We'll bring up another one. And let's grab that really annoying extra docking port, put it in our container as well. And then, um, because this is going to be continue to to be our area to attach um, to dock the space plane to, because it has those small docking ports, we'll go ahead and put the mostly empty container right there, and uh, we can use that um, on future visits if we continue to use this space shuttle or one like it. There, we got a couple container mounts right by the docking ports. Super convenient and ready for the next ship that comes needing to deliver or take supplies. So after spending some time resting in orbit, uh, it's time for uh, the space plane to go home. And uh, But Dudrin's actually going to do a stint on the space station. He hasn't really spent time here. Uh, and uh, Heliana also needs to head on into the space station. Uh, we need to do some inventory management. Heliana is going to stay there as well and uh, get... Uh, her uh, her leveling up points because we can do that at the lab. Carrie, thank you. He remembered to grab that light and put it in his inventory before we try to send the plane down with a light on top of it. That wouldn't be so good. Uh, let's level her up. That's nice. Fun feature. That way she can stay up here. We've kind of over... Uh, we've put the station at over capacity, but uh, we might want to even develop some kind of rescue emergency rescue system for the space station but for now we feel like we can send the space plane up in a moment of need and we don't really think we're going to have moments of need i don't have a random failures mod although i did accidentally burn the engines there when i was trying to hit alt so that's no good just do um one more last minute uh, transfer of uh life support supplies before we go because since we've used a bunch while the plane was docked here And it's actually going to be Dunbury who takes the plane home. He flew up here with Elsted, and uh, he's going to undock. And what a beautiful sunset over Kerbin with the radiator on the back of the, the station there and all the solar panels. I'm quite happy with how it's shaping up. We're going to try to correct um, our previous failed attempts at getting to the Space Center by aiming our periaps way past the uh, the actual runway. 
let's look at it uh, through the um, cockpit, shall we? Get turned around, facing the right way. Get our brightness controls set up. Dunbury gets everything aligned. And waves goodbye to his friends, just for now. We're coming up on our maneuver, and I actually decide to shift it, because I feel like the planet's rotated. We now need to fix it. We've been landing. I'm just eyeballing it. I had been putting my periaps over the Space Center, and we had been landing on the other side of the continent, so I just try to, to add that width of the continent there. Bye, Dolgoldor Space Station. Um, I just add the width of that continent to the Space Center and, and put my periaps out in the ocean about that distance away. And this is me figuring out where we're going to hit the atmosphere. Really lazy way of deciding exactly um, how I want to be pointed. Because <laughs> I, can, I can point my plane in that direction. He's happy. But he's about to attempt a relatively dangerous maneuver. Although, you know, this plane has, has proven itself. And uh, we actually have remembered to turn our control surfaces this time. That's a, that's a big plus from last time. Last time we were re-entering without any flaps. Although we still haven't fixed it in the space plane hangar that the rudders are doing pitch and roll and no yaw. As usual, we are pulling up as hard as we can. This is our third re-entry on this space plane and our third attempt to land on the runway. Uh, and it was a hole in one the first time, so I don't know what's so different. Um, these parts are just much heavier probably so we're still undershooting and I can't even believe it we 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 aimed our periaps so much further away I think we're gonna have to just bite the bullet and do a much steeper ascent if we try this again in the future I know I could just reload it and try it again really what I should do is just practice launching this thing launching and returning uh, maybe in a different save or just kind of in a kind of predetermined way just to learn its flight characteristics you know, kind of like running a simulation in a computer. Um, in any case, we burn our engines to get just a little more velocity. Uh, Dunbury really thinks he can make it over these mountains. Mission Control is quite concerned. They are wondering, will Dunbury land on top of a mountain? Will he land in a valley? Or will he smash himself into the side of a cliff? Find out in the next episode.